Hello, it's Darren Dance from ATB on September 6th with this week's roundup. Uh, let's start with what happened over the last week. On Saturday, we went to Caulfield with Platelet and Rue Maple in the same race, and um, I was quite pleased with both mares actually. Um, Golden Archer won the race, the, the odds on favourite, Peter Moody trained, and um, it was a good run. I thought Platelet, uh, who drew wide and sat out, was four wide early and sat outside Golden Archer. And Nicole did the right thing to ease on her and, and go back. And she made a good run around around them and uh, finished off a really creditable third. It's the first time she's raced for about six weeks, so I think um, I think that run will bring her on. And look, there's not a lot around for her. Um, we are going to nominate her for the Mackenzie this this Saturday coming at uh, Mooney Valley. And also the plan was to go to the Group 3 How Now over 1,200, a race which uh, Rue Maple is also likely to contest. Rue Maple in that race, uh, Michelle Payne rode her and she ran fourth and her strongest work was the last 100. So I was pretty happy with both those mares. Um, there was only a length between them. Two quality mares and I'm sure you know they'll, they'll win a race or two through the spring. On Sunday, we went up to Ballarat with uh, the Peter Moody train, Mum Biley. Um, she was an easy winner. She, she won by four and a half lengths and on a, on a heavy track. And um, before the corner, she looked to be struggling a bit. But when Luke Nolan said go, uh, she rounded up and put paid to him real quick. And there's going to be plenty more wins in store for Mum Biley. On Monday, we went up to stall and we produced a new horse called Edge of War, having his first start, um, son of Razor's Edge, trained by Darren Weir. Brad Rewilla rode him. Stall, which is traditionally can be a little bit of a leader's track, but Edge of War settled back last or second last, made a big run right round him and was way too good, winning by uh, 4.2 lengths in a very strong debut run. And he's a three-quarter to True Courser, another horse we had a few years ago that won 500000 on the track and won a Hobart Cup and a Bendigo Cup and also a Warnable Cup. So Edge of War looks to have a, a bright future. That win was a little bit unexpected, or the ease of that win was unexpected, certainly, but um, he looks a promising horse, and he's a, a lovely, big, athletic horse. So congratulations to all his owners, and we look forward to uh, seeing him run around again in a, in a fortnight's time. On Tuesday, we took Edge of Storm up to Seymour, and he was in a race where all the riders were apprentices, and... Damien Laid rode him. I don't think it was Damien would say it was one of his best rides, but um, they all went over the line together. Um, I think he's only beaten two and a half lengths, but um, I thought he was just a little bit disappointing. But second up, a staying type, waiting to get out to 2,000. Um, I'd probably forgive Edge of Storm at Seymour. Yesterday, we had a runner with Mark Cavanagh over at Balaclava, here the speaker. Um, another filly that was expected to lead and, and be very hard to beat, but... Uh, she didn't lead. Um, she got caught back and she got galloped on and probably done a fair job to um, run midfield, beaten four or five lengths. And we'll just have to get her right now because she did get galloped on. Nothing too serious, but probably a disappointing first up run for here, the speaker. So all in all, um, of the uh, six runners we had, uh, we had we certainly had two winners and two very strong winners. And um, a couple of good placed in listed grade at um, Caulfield. So we look forward to this week, uh, what's happening around the tracks. Um, we're going to start off tomorrow at Geelong with uh, Magnus Bell going to Geelong race one, 1,000 metres, three-year-old fillies. Damien Lane to ride. Uh, Magnus Bell, of course, um, first up at Swan Hill, um, ran behind that very smart commanding Jewel, who's second favourite for the Caulfield 1,000 guineas. And the horse that ran second since came to uh, Mildura and won easily as well. So Magnus Bell's probably got a little bit of a, a wrap on her. Um, we've got a horse in that race um, called Sweetener. It's not one of ours, but Mark Kavanagh trains it. Just looking through the form earlier tonight, um, Sweetener has ran third to Sam Arredi in the uh, a Blue Diamond Prelude. So obviously Sweetener goes pretty good. I'm not sure why it's going to Geelong on a Maiden on a Friday, but um, we've got to run against it anyway. But Magnus Bell, um, she's got tremendous speed. She's drawn a little bit wide out in nine. So we're kind of hoping that she can uh, use her speed early to get across and sit outside the leader, have a little bit of a rest, and then hopefully kick to the line. But I think she's probably a, 
I would have thought before I seen the former sweetener that she was a very going to be very hard to beat, but maybe she's a uh, a Quinella chance now. But, but she's gone well. Um, she's training well, and Darren Weir is very pleased with her since her first up run. Saturday, we turn our attention to Flemington. Uh, Shiny Buttons, race eight, the last race of the day in the 2,000 metre handicap. Once again, he's uh, drawn off the track in 13, and we've engaged uh, Vlad Jurek to ride him. Uh, Vlad's just picked up um, as stable rider for uh, Dali now after returning from a very successful stint in Singapore. And he's a jockey I rate highly, and I'm looking forward to getting Vlad Jurek on one of our horses. It's a shame he's drawn 13. He's currently a $15 chance. Um, I guess the hardest to beat will be the $2.50 chance excluded. Shiny Buttons is dropping from 2500 back to 2000 um, Flemington should suit him, nice big straight, um, but he might be just a little bit outclassed. But, you know, he's he hasn't missed a place all preparation. He's won a couple. He's been last four runs have all been seconds in town. And at $15, $4.50 the place, I think you've got to be backing him each way and having some extra on the place because he's definitely going to run a really good race. Also on Saturday at Newcastle, we've got our first starter by Dylan Thomas called Sir Dylan out of a mare called Rose Kay, trained by Chris Waller. Uh, this is the first of our Chris Waller horses to get to the racetrack. Um, with Chris, we've got four or five horses, mainly young horses, um, two and three year olds that are all be coming through over the next 12 months as we start to see a few of our horses race up in the New South Wales region. So Sir Dylan goes to Newcastle, race 7, 1400, th three-year-old maiden. And when you want to know it, he's drawn barrier 16. Anyway, uh, what can you do? So barrier 16, 1400 first up. He's going to, uh, he'll jump well. Hopefully he can take a position and then uh, let him run for the last 1400 metres of that 1400 metre race. I think the plan would be that this horse will probably need to go to the paddock and be gelded. Um, so he may have one or two starts his preparation. He has trialled in Sydney and ran second in a very nice trial. I think he's a class horse. He's a half-brother to nine winners and um, very well bred and uh, he's in good hands with Chris Waller. On Sunday, we'll be venturing up to Bendigo with Queen Era. Uh, she'll be second up this prep. Michelle Payne on board, uh, 1,100 metres. She's in the last race, race 10, barrier one, uh, 56 and a half and a zero to 68. Um, she'll be better for the run. She, she ran okay at Mildura first up. We knew it was too short. We knew she was underdone and we just wanted to see the, her hitting the line, which she did. Um, we expect a little bit more of a forward run from her this time, um, but we're really thinking uh, third or fourth run in will be her go, but she's just going through and getting fitter and fitter and better and better. So she's a, she's a mare that's won a couple of races and I think she will go on once she gets out a little bit further. Big day at Warnable on Monday with four runners. Um, in race one, we've got two horses engaged. We've got Schwarzens and Ready Diva. Schwarzens has had one start, ran fourth last preparation gone out came back matured up looks good unfortunately um there's a lot of first starters in there so she's currently fourth emergency so we'll need quite a few scratchings but we will look for another race for her just in case the other horse in that race is another one of our first starters ready diva ready diva is a reduced choice filly three-year-old out of a zabil mare so beautifully bred and i was just having a look at her pedigree page earlier and you know it's full of black type it's a very um good family it goes back to sir tristram and just some beautiful lines and a lot of stakes winners in that family ready diva um, has did trial up well about three weeks ago on a wet track uh, warnable's currently a heavy eight so the ground holds no fear for her um first up 1200 she'll be suited by that and she won't be hopeless there first up i expect her to run a reasonable race we've put thomas sadler on he claims to so she'll only carry 54 kilos and i guess a three-year-old maiden at warnable on a monday you wouldn't expect it to be over overly strong also at warnable we've got hectorius second up uh, the half brother to axurius by bella spree with matthew williams trains we've stepped him up to 1400 meters blinkers on he was disappointing first up on a really heavy track. Um, 
he was traveling beautifully to the corner and when he ryan maloney let his head go he was just dipping and diving and feet were going everywhere and he just battled away in the straight and you could actually see that he wanted to go but he he just wasn't able to find his feet up to 1400 blinkers on hopefully the track's not going to be heavy by monday i think we've got some nice fine weather for the weekend so hopefully get back to a dead or a slow and we can see the real hectorius because he has trialed particularly well on a number of occasions in the race nine there, I think it's the last race, uh, Cal Tara goes around the 0-62 to 62 with Michelle Payne on board for Darren Weir. Um, Cal Tara, last start we took her to Mildura with uh, a new plan to ride her back and see if we can get her to settle and hit the line strong. We rode her back, uh, Michelle Payne did a really good job. Uh, she had to fight with her a little bit to get her to settle. But uh, once she got in behind them and uh, she did hit the line particularly strong to run third and it was quite a good run. So this, you know, up to 1400 with the benefit of that one run with that style, I'm hoping uh, that uh, Kaltara can do that again. And certainly uh, the Warnable track holds no fears for her. So that's our runners up until Monday. Uh, we'll have nothing on Tuesday and Wednesday. On Thursday, we've entered um, that first start winner by a reset refill uh, for Ballarat. So we expect to see him uh, going around at Ballarat at this stage and um, and then I think Friday will be clear and then we'll be looking to next weekend in Melbourne to see what runners we have. So in terms of um, what else is happening around the place outside the racing, obviously now that the football season's almost over and we're getting into the, the real spring, uh, by this time next week the international horses in the UK will be all in quarantine and we'll be waiting for them to arrive on grand final day. That's an AFL grand final day. Uh, they arrive in Melbourne. And um, if you care to have a look at our website over the next week or so, you'll find that we've, we'll be scheduling a number of events for the Spring Carnival, which will be opening up to all of our owners, including um, the first function, which will be on October 6th, which is a Saturday morning, which we're planning to hold at the Werribee Racecourse at the Quarantine Centre. And that's a breakfast from 7 a.m where we're hoping to get a number of owners and friends and guests to come down to Werribee and we can have breakfast and we can all watch the international horses go through their paces around the Werribee Quarantine Centre. So if you want to have a look at, uh, you know, horses like Jackalbury and Tac de Bastron and American and Red Cardo and Dunedin and some of these horses, I suggest you just put pencil and note in for October 6th and we'll be in touch with uh, more information there. Early next week we'll be spending a day or two down in Warrnambool um, where we're giving some of our two-year-olds some jump outs as part of their education and we'll be videoing those jump outs as some of those horses progress through their education and then we'll be turning them out for a spell for the spring. One of those that uh, is of interest is a colt by Sebring. I did take a new photo of him last week and loaded it onto the website. And if you haven't had a look at that, you should go and have a look at that Sebring colt. He is one strong animal and he's certainly coming along very well. And he's down to be trained by um, Robert Smurden. So we'll be spending Tuesday and Wednesday in Warrnambool where we'll be videoing nine of those horses going around in those trials. And then we'll be turning all of them out for the spring. So there's a lot to look forward to there.